Welcome to an epic tale of bravery and strategy. Today, we dive into the historic battle of Dragovia and Elysia. Let's travel back in time and witness this captivating clash of civilizations. For six years, Julius Caesar has been waging war in Gaul strengthening Roman power with conquests and diplomacy. Arriving in Gaul, Julius Caesar began a series of campaigns to pacify the region and bring it under Roman control. Over the next four years he systematically defeated several Gallic tribes and gained nominal control over the area. In the winter of 54-53 BC, the Carnutes, who lived between the Seine and Loire rivers, killed the pro-Roman ruler Tasgetius and rose in revolt. Shortly thereafter, Caesar sent troops to the region in an attempt to eliminate the threat. These operations saw Quintus Tetrius Sabinus' 14th legion destroyed when it was ambushed by Ambiorix and Catavalcus of the Eburones. Inspired by this victory, the Aquatuci and Nervi joined the rebellion and soon a Roman force led by Quintus Tullius Cicero was besieged in its camp. Deprived of around a quarter of his troops, Caesar was unable to receive reinforcements from Rome due to the political intrigues caused by the collapse of the First Triumvirate. Slipping a messenger through the lines, Cicero was able to inform Caesar of his plight. Departing his base at Samarobriva, Caesar marched hard with two legions and succeeded in rescuing his comrades' men. Now commanding ten legions, he quickly struck the Nervi and brought them to heel before shifting west and compelling the Cernones and Carnutes to sue for peace. Continuing this relentless campaign, Caesar Ray subjugated each tribe before turning on the Eburones. Though defeated, the revolt had led to an upsurge in nationalism among the Gauls and the realization that the tribes must unite if they wished to defeat the Romans. Vercingetorix of the Averni worked to draw the tribes together and begin to centralize power. In 52 BC, the Gallic leaders met at Bibracti and declared that Vercingetorix would lead the united Gallic army. Launching a wave of violence across Gaul, Roman soldiers, settlers, and merchants were killed in large numbers. Initially unaware of the violence, Caesar learned of it while in winter quarters in Cisalpine Gaul. Mobilizing his army, Caesar moved across the snow-covered Alps to strike at the Gauls. Clearing the mountains, Caesar dispatched Titus Labianus north with four legions to attack the Senones and the Parisi. Caesar retained five legions and his allied Germanic cavalry for the pursuit of Vercingetorix. Having won a series of small victories, Caesar approached Dragovia where a serious battle began. Upon his arrival, Caesar discovered that the Gauls controlled a small hill crucial for their survival in Dragovia. From there, they had access to water, grain, and provisions. Caesar swiftly deployed to legions to secure the hill, joining them with his main camp by constructing a double trench with a 12-foot wide parapet. The barrier proved to be an effective blockade, depriving the Gauls of their much-needed supplies. Struggling to survive, they relied on a meager stream that barely sustained Dragovia itself. Celtic warriors armed with swords, shields, and spears prepare for battle. Vercingetorix, the chieftain of the Arverni tribe, stands tall, rallying his troops. Vercingetorix said filled with determination voice. Today, we fight for our freedom. The Roman legions have encroached upon our lands for far too long. We must show them the strength of the Celtic people. Ready yourselves. The Celtic warriors form a battle formation awaiting the arrival of the Roman legions. In the distance, the ground rumbles as the Romans approach. The Roman general, Julius Caesar, observes the battlefield from his command post. He addresses his officers, confident in their chances. Julius Caesar said, Dragovia stands as a symbol of Celtic defiance. Today, we shall conquer their fortress and bring them to their knees. Show no mercy.
The Roman legions advance in disciplined formation, shields raised, and spears ready. The clash between the Celts and Romans is imminent. The Celtic warriors charge forward, their war cries echoing through the air. A fierce melee ensues as swords clash against shields and spears thrust forward. Vercingetorix fights at the forefront, inspiring his troops with his bravery. The Celts push back the Romans, driving them away. Celtic archers rain arrows down upon the retreating Romans, causing chaos within their ranks. The Roman legions regroup, their commanders urging them to stand firm. The Romans launch a counterattack pushing back against the Celtic warriors. The battle becomes a brutal and bloody struggle, with both sides fighting fiercely for their cause. The sun begins to set, casting an eerie glow over the battlefield.
Vercingetorix, determined to turn the tide, leads a daring charge, breaking through the Roman lines. His warriors follow, unleashing their fury upon the Roman soldiers. The Romans, overwhelmed by the ferocity of the Celtic onslaught, begin to retreat in disarray. Vercingetorix and his warriors chase them relentlessly, driving them back towards their The Celtic warriors storm the Roman camp, setting tents ablaze and wreaking havoc upon the retreating soldiers. The Romans fight desperately, but the Celts overpower them. Caesar realized that the siege would fail unless he removed Vercingetorix from the high ground. He devised a plan, using one legion as bait while the others moved into more advantageous positions, capturing three Gaulish camps in the process. He then ordered a retreat to lure Vercingetorix down from his vantage point. However, most of Caesar's forces, driven by their earlier success, disregarded the order and directly assaulted, exhausting themselves in the process. The Romans struggled to breach defenses. The Aedui arrived to support the Romans, but due to confusion, they were mistaken for enemies and subsequently attacked. Caesar could do little more than cover their retreat. Julius Caesar realizing the situation said, Retreat! Fall back to the safety of the legions. The remaining Roman soldiers flee, leaving behind a scene of destruction. The Celts have emerged victorious. Vercingetorix and his warriors stand triumphant. The battle for Dragovia has been won, a testament to the courage and resilience of the Celtic people. Caesar was defeated by the Gauls at Dragovia temporarily falling back. Caesar continued to attack the Gauls over the next few weeks through a series of cavalry raids. Not believing the time was right to risk battle with Caesar, Vercingetorix withdrew to the walled Mandubi town of Elysia. Arriving in Elysia, Caesar discovered situated on a hill and surrounded by river valleys, Elysia offered a strong defensive position. Arriving with his army, Caesar declined to launch a frontal assault and instead decided to lay siege to the town. As the entirety of Vercingetorix's army was within the walls along with the town's population, Caesar expected the siege to be brief. To ensure that Elysia was fully cut off from aid, he ordered his men to construct an encircling set of fortifications known as a circumvallation. Featuring an elaborate set of walls, ditches, watchtowers, and traps, the circumvallation ran approximately 11 miles. Understanding Caesar's intentions, Vercingetorix launched several cavalry attacks with the goal of preventing the completion of the circumvallation. These were largely beaten off though a small force of Gallic cavalry was able to escape.
The fortifications were completed in around three weeks. Concerned that the escaped cavalry would return with a relief army, Caesar began construction on a second set of works which phased out. Known as a contravallation, this 13-mile fortification was identical in design to the inner ring facing Elysia. In late September, Vercingetorix faced a crisis with supplies nearly exhausted and part of his army debating surrender. His cause was soon bolstered by the arrival of a relief army under the command of Camaius and Vercus of Elinus. On September 30th, Camaius launched an assault on Caesar's outer walls while Vercingetorix attacked from the inside. Both efforts were defeated as the Romans held. The next day the Gauls attacked again, this time under the cover of darkness. While Camaius was able to breach the Roman lines, the gap was soon closed by cavalry led by Mark Antony and Gaius Trebonius. On the inside, Vercingetorix also attacked, but the element of surprise was lost due to the need to fill in Roman trenches before moving forward. As a result, the assault was defeated. Beaten in their early efforts, the Gauls planned a third strike for October 2nd against a weak point in Caesar's lines where natural obstacles had prevented construction of a continuous wall. Moving forward, 60,000 men led by Vercus of Elinus struck the weak point while Vercingetorix pressured the entire inner line. Issuing orders to simply hold the line, Caesar rode through his men to inspire them. Breaking through, Vercus of Elinus men pressed the Romans. Under extreme pressure on all fronts, Caesar shifted troops to deal with threats as they emerged. Dispatching Levi and his cavalry to help seal the breach, Caesar led a number of counterattacks against Vercingetorix's troops along the inner wall. Though this area was holding, Labianus men were reaching a breaking point. Rallying 13 cohorts of prox, 6,000 men, Caesar personally led them out of the Roman lines to attack the Gallic rear. Spurred on by their leader's personal bravery, Labianus men held as Caesar attacked. Caught between two forces, the Gauls soon broke and began fleeing. Pursued by the Romans, they were cut down in large numbers, with the relief army rooted and his own men unable to break out. Vercingetorix surrendered the next day and presented his arms to the victorious Caesar. As with most battles from this period, precise casualties around not known, and many contemporary sources inflate the numbers for political purposes. With that in mind, Romans' losses are believed to be around 12,800 killed and wounded, while the Gauls may have suffered up to 250,000 killed and wounded as well as 40,000 captured. The victory at Elysia effectively ended organized resistance to Roman rule in Gaul. A great personal success for Caesar, the Roman Senate declared 20 days of thanksgiving for the victory but refused him the a triumphal parade through Rome. Join my channel next time, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications, so you won't miss any of my exciting historical content. Thanks for watching.